Sele will not return from the Sea of Quanta. Yeah, you heard me right. No more. I am a bit conflicted. Chapter 38 just released in CN and addressed some of the things I wanted to talk about in this video. Initially, I planned to not look at the chapter at all, but to avoid stupid oh he looked at CN and he's lying accusations, I decided to take a look anyways. And oh boy I'm glad I did because otherwise I would have never beaten those allegations. So I will mention some stuff that happens in chapter 38, but don't worry, it will be towards the and then I will put a big spoiler warning for you to know when to back out. Unfortunately, this is the only way to make the video the way I want to and also be fair to you guys. So thank you for understanding me and without further ado, let's talk about the new story arc. In chapter 36, Sele and Susan are dispatched to Nagazora to investigate an organization called Incognito that is causing problems in the city. They discover that the one behind the organization is one of the remaining grey serpents. While pursuing him, Sele and Susana get trapped into the Sea of Quanta. There, the two Seles are separated and transported to different bubble universes. Sele and Susana arrive in Salt Snow Holy City, while Dark Sele is transported to the county of Iron Sand. Sele and Susana met Shigure Kira and a very sus resident called Vita. Vita. Meanwhile, Dark Sele encounters the great and magnificent Hersher of Sentience. <clears throat> um, please note that I say these words of my own volition. My mind isn't under someone's control or anything of the sort. And they also meet Professor Rock Nanodesu. Both Celes learn that the people of these bubble universes worship an entity called the Sage of the High Tower. While the Holy City represents the world of the living, the country of Iron Sand represents the afterlife. The residents of the Holy City believe that the Sage will bring the souls of the dead to the underworld, while the residents of the underworld, who have lost their physical bodies and can only exist as wisps, believe that the Sage will allow them to be reborn someday. Sele, Vita, Kira and Susana encounter Prometheus, who tells them about how she and Mistaline started hunting this so-called abnormal stigmata born in the Sea of Quanta due to the ripples caused by Project Stigma. The two first arrived in the Salt Snow Holy City because they sensed an abnormal stigma present here. By pure chance, they also met Shigure Kira and ended up in a short altercation with her. Their fight was stopped by the Sage, who turned out to be the abnormal stigma they were searching for. Unlike the other abnormal stigma from before, the existence of this one was tied to the laws of the bubble universe, which made it difficult for them to remove her without putting the entire bubble universe in danger. After some time, Mistaline and Prometheus made a deal with the Sage to govern the people in her place and to bring Sele over to this bubble universe. On the other hand, Dark Sele, Senti and Professor Schrodinger tried to figure things out at their own end. Due to a previous incident where both Seles could feel each other's presence after touching a piece of salt rock, they decide to go to the border and try to establish a connection again. The other group does the same and the two Seles are able to reunite and talk with each other again. I know that this recap is a bit bare bones, but please keep in mind that I will do a more detailed one for the entire story arc when everything is over. Sele is often associated with the concepts of life and death. One of the main motives behind Sele's design is the butterfly. Butterflies represent being reborn and resurrection due to their metamorphosis. They also represent the soul in various cultures around the world. For instance, for the Japanese, a white butterfly indicates the soul of the departed. In ancient Greece, butterflies were the emblem of the soul and represented immortality. The ancient Greeks 
physics, also called the butterfly psyche, which means mind or soul. Even her name literally translates as soul in German. Sele is also associated with the Herscher of Death from the previous era. While not directly connected, besides the fact that there are most likely different iterations of the same person through the cycles of the samsara, they share an identical looking stigma. Despite its name, the powers of the Herscher of Death are not related only to, uh, well, death. In fact, a much more accurate representation of this power would be the power over life and death. Much like the Shariac Holy Blood, the authority of the Herscher of Death can heal and decompose. This is evident in how the Abyss Flower is made up of two different weapons that embody those abilities. The Black Abyss, which has the power of destruction, and the White Flower, which has the power of healing. Another part of this story that is connected to the concepts of life and death are the two bubble universes where the action takes place. What's strange about them is the fact that these two bubble universes exist in the same place. I saw some people associating them with the concepts of heaven and hell, which I am not that big of a fan of, since both of those are concepts of afterlife, while here only one is meant to represent that. Rather, if I were to associate the underworld with the depiction of afterlife, it would definitely be the purgatory and not hell. According to medieval Christian belief, the purgatory is a place of purification and temporary punishment, where the souls of the dead are prepared for heaven. The purgatory answers the human need to believe in a just and merciful cosmos, one in which ordinary people may undergo correction, cleanse and heal their souls. And while it's not a one-to-one -one situation, you can perceive the afterlife in this bubble universe as some sort of purgatory. The souls that end up here must bask in the moonlight to maintain their form, which can be seen as some sort of purification. They do this while waiting for the sage to one day let them back to life, similarly to how the souls in the Christian purgatory wait to enter heaven. The sage also refers to the process of the souls bathing in moonlight as consolation. The act of consolation is to offer someone comfort, solace or consideration. This, again, aligns very well with the idea of purgatory, which is seen as God's consolation towards the soul of the dead. Another interesting element present in both bubble universes is the salt rock, which has the same property as the light that is coming from the tower and can help the souls in the underworld maintain their form, while also purifying the corruption in the world of the living. In Christianity, salt has been associated with the idea of light and used to symbolize spiritual cleansing and purification. The Sage of the High Tower is one of the central figures of this story. Based on what Prometheus and Mistelin said in chapter 37, it's important to make the distinction between the person that is the Sage and the idea of the Sage itself. The Sage right now is an abnormal stigma born six months ago by the ripples caused by Project Stigma in the Sea of Quanta. But, based on what the people of the Bubble Universe said, the concept of the Sage existed way before that. This suggests that the idea of the Sage predates the existence of the current one. As she demonstrated when she stopped the lights of the tower and threw the entire bubble universe into chaos, the powers of the current sage are real. Then how is it possible for an abnormal stigma to become the sage? Well, this is my initial speculation. Stigma in essence are human narratives projected in imaginary space. I am not going to go into details, if you want to know more, watch my videos about Project Stigma and Stigmata. The concept of the sage is a narrative of this world. And this abnormal stigma took the form of this narrative when it was born. Due to the strange laws of the Sea of Quanta and Stigmata, I believe that she became the embodiment of the legend of the Sage of the High Tower that the people of this bubble universe believed in. Similarly, I also believe that you can become the embodiment of a cool and wise person just by pressing that subscribe button at the bottom of the video.
So, what are you waiting for? Subscribe for more Honkai lore related content. I am sure that you've already figured this out, but based on her appearance and the fact that they share the same VA, the Sage seems to be an alternate version of Sele. During the Durandal visual novel, we learn that people inside a bubble universe can exist as copies of people from the real world. Also, since the Sage is a stigma crystal like Mistaline, she must have used a real person as a template to manifest a body. This is similar to how Mistaline used Cecilia and Abnormal Stigma number 13 used Chen Tian Wu. Vita, Vita, Vita. You know, I actually got to like her. Too bad that she's a massive walking red flag. Let's talk about Miss Sass here. I saw quite a few debates on whether Vita is a female variant of Sue or not. In my opinion, she is. There are just too many similarities between the two. The color of her hair and eyes, the pattern on her clothes, everything about Vita screams Sue. And maybe the biggest giveaway is the mark on her neck, which is identical to Sue's. Now, if she truly is a female version of Sue, then is she the same person that Sue talked about in ER? For those of you who don't know, during one of his many conversations with Mei in ER, Sue told her about a woman that is an alternate version of himself that chased his consciousness through multiple worlds. He described her as malicious with incredibly strong psychic powers. Many took that piece of dialogue as foreshadowing, so it would make sense for Vita to be her. Otherwise, why make a Sue female variant in the first place? Why not make a cow pass female counterpart? Now that's something I would have loved to see, damn it. In all seriousness, from a writing perspective, it would make the most sense. But at the same time, the story still didn't give us enough reasons to believe that. What's also interesting about Vita is her apparent lack of devotion for the Sage. All the people in this bubble universe have a strong faith in the Sage. Everybody except for Vita. Regardless, there is a lot more to her than meets the eye, that's for sure. But I will go into more details about her in the spoiler section. In chapter 36, the two Celes were separated and were able to exist independently from each other. Even if this was completely out of their control, their entire journey through the game pointed toward this moment. Let's talk about why I think that they'll remain separated. First. Who is Dark Sele? She is a form slash stigma crystal born as a response to Sele's desire for protection. Throughout the series, Sele relies on her to protect herself in the face of danger. After the Sea of Quanta story arc, we see Sele trying to be more independent. This is best seen during the Hersher of Domination arc, where she wanted to solve her problems by herself. Unfortunately, the enemy at that time was way beyond her level, so she ended ended up relying on Dark Sele. Later, during the detective investigation in Nagazora, she didn't call upon Dark Sele at all, showing her growth and determination to pull through on her own. Similarly to Cinnamon Rose Sele, her other self has her own struggles and growth. The issue with Dark Sele was that she went through a continuous identity crisis ever since she was born. Was she a human or a monster? Chapter 33 focused a lot on her trying to find an identity for herself. She also had a lingering fear that one day Sele will not need her anymore. Because her entire identity revolved around protecting Sele, she feared that if Sele grew strong enough to where she didn't need her, she will lose her only sense of self. Both of them were dependent on each other, but as time passed, they learned to give each other more space and grow. That's why I think that the two will remain separated from now on. When Dark Sele was born, she was a necessary presence in Sele's life. She was weak and couldn't protect herself, but as she continues to grow, she doesn't need protection anymore. Dark Sele always tied her identity to Cinnamon Roll Sele, to a point where it was sort of... Uh, 
toxic for the lack of a better word. They had a similar relationship to a child and a parent. As children, we need our parents to be constantly present in our lives because we don't have the means to survive on our own. After we become adults, we kinda break off and become independent. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you don't need your parents in your life as an adult. You always need them in your life. But at some point, you need to stop relying on them for everything. Otherwise, you'll have serious issues in your adult life. I believe that the relationship between the two cellists is similar. They needed to always be together in the past, but now I see them at the point where separating could help them grow even more. I will expand on this in the next part when we enter into chapter 38 spoiler territory. So, this is my big spoiler warning to you. If you want to play the chapter for yourself on Global, please leave now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. If you don't mind spoilers, let's continue. Okay, oh my god, this chapter is crazy. Initially, I was going to talk about how Sele will become the new sage, and lo and behold, she actually did, and a lot sooner than I expected. Please keep in mind that everything that I will say is based on fan translation, so I'm still missing a few pieces of the puzzle. If I get something wrong, please correct me in the comments. Sele being the new sage was obvious based on the whole setup from chapter 37. The concept of sage is one of the laws of this bubble universe, so there there must always be a sage for the bubble universe to function normally. My understanding is that before abnormal stigma number 14 took over the position, the entire bubble universe was in chaos and she was born as a response to the people's wishes for a sage that keeps things in order. The issue with the current sage is that because she is an abnormal stigma, she is incomplete and cannot properly fulfill the sage's duty. Every time she tries to bring the souls of the dead to the underworld, she loses a part of herself, resulting in the souls of the afterlife having destabilized forms and manifesting as wisps. Because of this, they needed a new sage that can fulfill this duty properly to save those people and the bubble universe. Mistaline and the sage hope that Sele will be able to do it, since she perfectly embodies the concept of two-in-one which is tied to the laws of the bubble universe. The laws of the bubble universe say that only the sage can travel between life and death. When the two cells were able to communicate at the end of chapter 37, since they share one body, the bubble universe recognized Sele as someone with the ability to travel between the world of the dead and the living, thus becoming the second sage of the high tower. The issue after that was that there can only be one sage. Since now there were two, the entire bubble universe started collapsing. To stop that, Sele had to defeat the current sage and fully take control over the tower. After they resolved the conflict with the sage and the other abnormal stigma, Sele took up the position of the sage, but the bubble universe was still collapsing. Soon, they realized that there must be another law above the sage itself that causes the issue. Kira reveals that she and Molasses traveled to another bubble universe that faced a similar fate. There, they learned that the bubble universe was destroyed by an entity that had the power to change the laws of the bubble universe itself. That entity was going around the Sea of Quanta, destroying many bubble universes in the process. Not even the sugars are sure who or what this entity is, but they called it the Abyss of the Sea of Quanta. For someone to be able to change the laws of a bubble universe, that being must be similar in power to the cocoon of finality. Kira believes that the same entity is behind the demise of this bubble universe as well. Schrodinger reveals that there is a way to anchor and save this bubble universe, but that would require either Kiana or a new Hersher that is born from the Sea of Quanta and is not tied to the proper universe. For Sele to anchor this bubble universe in a similar way to the Randall, she must become a being equivalent to the Hersher of finality for this bubble universe. Unfortunately, a Hersher born in the Sea of Quanta seems way too paradoxical to be a feasible plan. So instead, they decide to work together and use the fixed anchor points of this bubble universe to find a way and transport it closer to the real world so that Kiana will be able to anchor the bubble universe. While this mess is going on, Vita finally reveals that she is not from this bubble universe. What a shocker, am I right? Initially, she was from the 
proper world like the rest of them, but she wasn't from Earth but Venus. The civilization there was destroyed by the Honkai, which we learn in chapter 35, and she ended up in the Sea of Quanta near Earth. Then she drifted and arrived in the bubble universe that Kira and Molasses previously visited, and there she was part of the team that was supposed to find a new habitable planet for the people of the bubble universe before it got destroyed. When the explosion happened and the residents were killed, Vita was far away and she was able to manage to survive. After the bubble universe was destroyed, she ended up drifting in the salt snow holy city. So yeah, it seems that Vita is actually not the evil Sue. This is a really interesting turn of events. Unless, maybe she's lying. But given what happens in chapter 38, this is pretty unlikely. Anyway, Hoyo may still surprise us. And now, the big question. Will Sele be able to return? Since the addition of APHO2 and Silverwing Brania, there were all sorts of speculations that something might have happened to Sele. Well, now we know. During chapter 38, Dark Sele has a pretty grim vision of the future. In this future, Light Sele is gone after this incident and the other Sele is alone. To cope with her loss, she starts pretending to be Light Sele, fooling everyone around her. Now, while this vision is pretty up, I don't think that it will happen. Since we already know that Sele will become a Hersher, I think that in reality she will survive. However, and maybe I'm completely wrong about this, I think that she will remain in this bubble universe to keep it stable. During one of the dialogues in APHO, we learn that the real leader of Squad 2 is someone with a bad personality that matches a lot Dark Sele's personality. And since in this vision we learn that Dark Sele is a Valkyrie and she's connected to one of the squads, it really makes me think that she is the actual leader of squad 2. Well, Light Sele will survive, but she will remain in this bubble universe to fulfill her duties as a sage. Meanwhile, Dark Sele will continue her life in the real world, but she won't pretend to be Light Sele and cope with her loss. Instead, she will be herself because Light Sele is actually alive. That would also explain Bronya's attitude in APHO and it would make the most sense to me. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you think that Sele will remain in the Sea of Quanta or do you think that the vision will become true and that she will die? This chapter has been full of revelations that I didn't even touch upon, like the new lore about the sky people and this new mysterious entity that seems to be set up as the next big villain. For the moment I want to wait a bit and gather my thoughts and after this chapter is out on global I will make more videos on this. 